Hello and welcome. My name is Abdel Jabar and I am a support engineer with Grand Swim Networks. In today's video, we'll talk about the CarQ functionality built into the Grand Stream IPPBX UCM 6000 series. The CarQ on the UCM offers a variety of features and options that will help you run your own inbound call center in the most efficient way. These features and options can be used in conjunction to create uh, an effective service and a satisfying caller experience. Some of these features and options include virtual queue callback, customized music on hold and voice prompts, position and wait time announcements, and several ring strategies for routing incoming calls. It is also built with some monitoring and reporting tools like the switchboard and the statistics, and it provides more flexibility to agents to log in and log out of the car queue, as well as pause and end pause during their lunch break. I will explain and demo all the major car queue features provided by the UCM through this presentation and the live demo. Before we dive into the configuration of the car queue, let me show you how the car queue feature works on the UCM and highlight some of the options that you can set up to improve your customers experience when they call your business. Let's look at this example to help us understand how calls gets processed through the call queue. The call queue uses what we call an automatic call distributor or ACD to control the flow of callers, dispatch calls to the agents based on the predefined ring strategy, and hold queued calls in first in first out order until an agent is available to take the call. In this scenario, I have a call queue with two static agents and the ring strategy is set to ring the top agent first. So when a call is routed directly to the call queue, the UCM checks the availability of the agents and decides which agent to forward the call to based on the ring strategy set up for the call queue. When the caller is connected with the agent, the queue is emptied. The subsequent incoming calls will go through the same process of checking if there is an agent available to take the call and eventually route the call. The ACD will keep track of the status of the agents and when it detects that all agents are busy, it will put the caller on hold while waiting for an agent to be available. While the caller is waiting, the UCM will play the sound files in the music on hold class and will designate a position number to the call. And the same process will be repeated for subsequent callers. And one thing that I would like to mention here is that whether you use the built-in sound files for music on hold or you upload your customized sound files, Music on Hold it's worth using to increase customer retention and satisfaction. By default, Music on Hold plays automatically when a customer calls the queue. You can customize it by creating a Music on Hold class that includes a greeting, uh, music, or even an engaging message to promote certain products or deals. Uh, professionally recorded music on hold uh, always creates a good first impression when customers call your business. In addition to music on hold, you can enable some of the built-in announcements to inform the callers of their status while waiting in the in the in the call queue. You can enable wait time announcement to let the callers know approximately how long it will take for an agent to answer their call. You can also enable position announcement to let the callers know their place in the queue and set up a time interval to update them of their position. Besides, the call queue can be set up with a destination custom prompt to allow callers to choose between staying on the uh, on the physical queue 
or leave it a voicemail, for example, to request a callback. And actually this feature, uh, there are several other modes that you can choose as the failover destination, such as a ring group, uh, an extension, an IVR, or even an external uh, number. Then we have the virtual queue callback, uh, which is a very sophisticated feature included in the call queue functionality. Uh, basically, virtual queue allows callers to receive callbacks in the same amount of time as if they waited on hold in the physical queue. Let's further explain how it works on the UCM and give an example. So when the call queue is configured with a virtual queue, the UCM will play a built-in voice prompt that says the following, press star, just set the callback number to the one you are currently using, press zero to set a new callback number, or press uh, pound to continue waiting. This message will keep repeating for all callers based on the predefined time interval. So if a caller opts to press the star to set the callback number, the caller will be placed in a virtual queue that maintains the caller's spot in the queue while the UCM monitors if an agent becomes available. For example, the caller in position two is now free to pursue his work activities instead of waiting in the call queue without losing his position in the call queue. And once the caller's turn arrives and there is an agent ready to receive calls, the UCM will initiate a call to the agent. When the call is answered by the agent, the UCM will prompt him or her that this is a virtual queue callback and immediately launches an outbound call to the caller in the virtual queue. This is a very nice feature to enable when setting up the call queue because uh, trust me, it will improve the caller experience by reducing the perceived wait time and call abandonment. Another option that I want to highlight is the max uh, queue length. This option sets the maximum number of calls that can be queued at one time. This number does not count the calls that are already connected with the agents. And probably the question that you might be asking is why you need to limit the number of queued calls. This option can be really helpful in cases when the number of concurrent calls is limited by your SIP carrier or when you have analog trunks and the number of concurrent calls is limited by the number of POTS lines connected to the UCM. So when the number of queued calls is reaching its max and instead of uh, dropping calls or having them rejected with a busy tone you can set up the option to route calls to a voicemail for example when the queued calls reaches the maximum number and another flexible feature of the call queue is that agents can dynamically log in to the call queue when the volume of the calls is high and more agents are needed to log in and take calls. Uh, later in this video, I will explain the several methods supported by the call queue and the UCM to assign agents and add them dynamically and also give them the option to pause and add pause during their, their breaks. So now that I briefly explained how the call queue works and how you can take advantage of some of the features offered by the call queue, Let's go to the web interface of the UCM and explore more of these features and dive into the configuration of these parameters. So I will log into my UCM. Then the call queue features are available under call queue, call features. As you can see, I already have one call queue created, so I'm gonna add another one. So when you, when you click on add a new call queue, the UCM will assign it an extension automatically from the range of call queue extensions. You can always change that one. For example, if you want to set that one to 6510, I can change the number. 
the name is required. So let's assume this is for um, like a travel agency and this cocky will be uh, specifically uh, designed for the ticketing uh, agents. So I'm just gonna call it ticketing. And to make sure that calls are distributed efficiently among agents, the UCM offers a variety of ring strategies that can help you achieve that. As you can see, there are six strategies. The top one is a ring all strategy, which will ring all the agents simultaneously. This is similar to ring group, where all the agents assigned to the call queue will have their phone ringing. And whoever picks up the phone first will connect to the, uh, to the caller. Next, we have the linear method. The UCM will always ring agents sequentially from the top of the agents list. And this is where you create your agents list. You just go to the agents tab. Then you choose the static agents that will become member of this call queue. So when you set the strategy to linear, what's going to happen? The UCM will always call. It will always start with extension 1000. Then, if extension 1000 is busy, it's going to move to extension 1001. Then 1002. And then 1003. It's always going to start with the top one. If you want to change the order of these extensions or the extensions in this list, you just select the extensions and you can use these arrows to change the order so let's go back to the ring strategy the third option is the least recent which will call the agent who has been called the least in the last period of time with fewest calls the UCM will route inbound calls to the agent who has answered the least amount of calls this type of ring strategy can help balance the overall call distribution uh, among uh, agents. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we have random, which will simply route calls randomly without taking into consideration any parameter. And the last method, with, which is round robin, the call will be routed to the next available agent in the predefined order under the agent's list so basically the UCM remembers the agent that answers the call the last uh, time and routes the call to the next uh, agent I'm going to explain the difference between round robin and linear let me go back here to the agents list linear the UCM will always start with the extension uh, uh, the first one in the list so it's going to call extension 1002. If there is a second call coming in, it's going to check if extension 1002 is available or not. If it's busy, then it's going to send the call to extension 1000. If extension 1002 is no more available and there is a third call coming in, the UCM will send it to extension 1002. That's how linear works. With round robin, it's different. For the first call, for example, the UCM will send it to extension 1002. The second call will go to extension 1000. If both of these extensions are available and they're not busy and there is a third call coming in, it will go to extension 1001. So the UCM with round robin, it always remembers the last agent that took the call so that it can send it to the next one. And some of you might be wondering which strategy to use. Is it ring all, linear, round robin, or random? This actually depends on how many agents you have in the call queue and the type of service you provide to your customers and the agent's qualification to handle the call effectively. We talked earlier about music on hold. As I mentioned, the UCM has a built-in sound files that you can choose under the default music on hold class. You can always upload your own music on hold under PBX music on hold. Just create a new music on hold class and then you can upload your own sound files. And once you do that, when you come back here to music on hold, you will see it 
available as an option right here. The max Q lint, we talked about that one earlier. This one can be set up to direct calls to a voicemail, for example, when certain volume of callers is reached. And this option is very useful, as I mentioned earlier, especially when you have a SIP trunk or you have a limited number of analog trunks, uh, which restrict the amount of callers that you can have uh, at the same time you can set that option. For example, if I set it to three, the UCM can only allow three calls to be uh, held in the queue. If there is a fourth call coming in, the UCM will use the destination available under max wait time. You don't wanna choose hang up. In this case, probably you wanna choose something else like voicemail and then you can create one voicemail extension specifically for that functionality. So that's when you have more callers in the queue, you can send the callers to the voicemail and then the agents can reach out to these callers when the volume of the calls is low or when you have more agents uh, available. The wrap up time is the amount of time needed by an agent to update the system with uh, relevant details about the completed call. And a lot of call centers, they use this time for the agents so that they can update the ticket or they can send an email or they can page uh, uh, a technician. Next, we have these two options, retry time and the ring time. So when you have the extensions that are members of the call queue, the UCM is going to call them for 30 seconds, then pause for 5 seconds, and call them back again for 30 seconds, pause for 5 seconds. You can change those numbers to something else that's going to fit the requirements of your call center. Then next you have the option to record uh, call queue calls or not record them. In case you want to record all the calls that go to the call queue, just make sure you set all calls and later I'm going to show you we can have access to those recordings. Next let's talk about the welcome prompt. The welcome prompt is basically a message that plays for the callers uh, before the call gets connected or gets routed to the agent. Some businesses they use this option to play a message to inform callers that the that the call will be recorded for quality assurance and training purposes. Some other businesses they use it to uh, claim uh, to play a disclaimer before the uh, the callers gets connected with the agents so you can customize your own using the custom prompt uh, the available custom uh, prompts you can actually add more and their PBX settings voice Prompts. You can record them using your IP phone that is registered to the UCM or you can upload ones that you already that you already have in your local directory. Or you can simply do it from here, upload the audio file so that every time someone calls the call queue, the UCM will play that prompt before it starts routing the calls to the agents. The max wait time by default it's set to 60 seconds. You probably want to increase that one to five minutes or ten minutes. So what happens when you have callers waiting in the call queue after five minutes, you can set up uh, a destination for that, uh, for that, uh, for these calls. So, so they don't have to stay in the call queue for, for uh, a long time. And this is a nice feature to configure, especially to reduce excessive wait time. So when a caller has been on hold for a certain amount of time without being assisted by the agent, you can simply route their calls to a voicemail so that an agent can reach out to them uh, later. And next we have the destination custom prompt. Uh, this option can help optimize call queues and reduce time in the queue. Uh, when enabled, the destination prompt provides callers with the option of directing their calls to other destinations like an extension or ring group or uh, leaving a voicemail for an agent to reach out to them uh, when the call volume is low. 
one important thing about this feature is when you upload your own custom prompt you have to mention that the customers they need to press one and if you hover over the custom prompt you will see it clearly mentioned in the tooltip that tells you that the option or the DTMF used for this functionality is one so the customers they need to press one so that the UCM can direct their calls to a voicemail or an extension or any of these options that you have available here including an external uh, number and you can specify the cycle uh, one minute I think it's too early probably you want to do like two minutes or three minutes or five minutes it's up to you how you would like to set up the the cycle time so when you go to advanced settings the UCM provides you with some other uh, advanced features that you can configure and add to your call queue configuration and one of them is the virtual queue and as I mentioned during the presentation the virtual queue is a nice feature that allows callers or gives the option to callers to leave their callback number just by using the feature star or zero or they can press pound to continue waiting in the ACD queue this feature supports two modes you have the timeout mode and you have the DTMF mode with uh, option two so for example let's start with timeout mode if you put 60 seconds here what's going to happen the UCM every minute it's going to prompt the callers to leave their callback number or stay in the queue so if they opt to uh, receive a callback number they have two options which is star and zero uh, the UCM will keep their position in the in the ACD queue and when their turn arrives the UCM will initiate a call to the agent and to the caller so that they can get connected and get the caller served and assisted by the agent uh, one important thing when you use the virtual queue is that you would like to have one specific outbound route for that uh, uh, for that uh, feature and that's why the call queue functionality gives you the option to provide a prefix for your outbound route the reason why because some users they might be calling from an internet an international number and they can leave an international number and probably you don't want the the uh, UCM to initiate calls to uh, external numbers so for example when you define the outbound prefix to 99 let's save and apply those changes then come back and continue the other settings you can go to the extensions and then outbound routes and create I have one created here already so let me explain how it works so this is the outbound route that the virtual queue callback will use to initiate calls to the callers and as you can see I made the pattern explicitly defined in other words the UCM will only be able to call 10 digits and 11 digits and I instructed the outbound route to strip the two leading digits which is the prefix 99 before sending the call to the carrier and you can also customize the privilege level in case you have multiple outbound routes with different privileges levels anyway if you want to learn more about outbound inbound calls there is a video in the Grandstream YouTube channel that you can use that you can watch to learn more about how you can configure these parameters so let's go back to our call queue so as I mentioned make sure you add the prefix and dedicate an outbound route for it and there's this option right here it's called enable virtual queue timeout without this option what's going to happen when the turn of the caller who leaves their callback number arrives the UCM is as I mentioned is going to call the agent as a normal call it's going to call all the available agents until the uh, until the call times out and you can specify for how long the UCM can call these agents so for example if I put 60 seconds that means and I'm telling the UCM for callback uh, calls make sure you ring the agents only for 60 seconds and if nobody answers the call just override it and move on to the next 
uh, caller and then start directing calls to the agent. So it's up to you whether you want to enable this option or disable it. That depends on how you would like to implement the call queue in your environment. The UCM also supports these two options. It's the position announcement and the wait time announcement. And there is a time interval that the UCM will announce these uh, uh, or will make these announcements. The position announcements, uh, this one is played upon entering the car queue. Let's say there are two active calls and you are the third call calling in. The UCM, once it, you, you hit the car queue, the UCM is going to tell you you are second, uh, in, the, uh, you are in second position in the car queue. And if you enable the wait time after one minute, the UCM will start playing the wait time. This is a, it uses its an internal algorithm to calculate how much time uh, it's going to take for the next agent to answer your call. The default interval is 20 seconds. You probably want to put that one to one minute, two minutes. It's up to you. So you have a lot of options and you have a lot of flexibility in terms of configuring those uh, time intervals. Next, let's move to the uh, empty queue. Definitely, there are times where uh, there won't be any agents to take the call, uh, especially during out of business hours when you don't have an inbound route configured properly or uh, anyway, it's, it's always recommended to set up the empty queue. So when there's no agents and people, they call into the call queue, how do you want the call queue to respond to these uh, to these callers. So the first option we have is leave when uh, when empty. And this option it configures with the callers should be disconnected prematurely from the queue in case where uh, there is no agent currently available to take uh, the call. And there are three options. So if you look at the list right here, you have strict, no, and yes. Yes means callers will be disconnected from a queue if all agents are paused or unavailable. Then no means callers will never be disconnected from a call queue. And the strict, which is the default one, callers will be disconnected from a queue if there are no agents or if all agents are unavailable or paused. You can always hover over the tooltip so you can remember the difference between these uh, options. For the dial into uh, uh, empty queue, this one configures with the callers can dial into a queue with no agents. And there are also three options similar to the one that we talked about and the leave when empty. You have yes, no, and strict. And if you hover over this tool, it explains exactly what each one of them uh, does. And then for the destination or the failover destination, this is where you choose when people call out of business hours, where do you want these calls to go to? You can send them, for example, to a voicemail or you can create an announcement under right here. And then in the announcement, you can tell them, for example, our business hours is from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please call us again during this time range, something like that to tell them that they, 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 they were calling out of business uh, hours. So I'm going to skip this one. I will come back to it in a moment. Then let's resume these two uh, other options at the bottom. The first one is the report hold time. This option, when you enable it, when the agent picks up the call, the UCM is going to tell the agent for how long that caller has been waiting in the queue. This is used for especially when you have callers waiting for a long time. You want the agents to uh, to apologize to the callers for the long wait before they start uh, processing their request. Another two options uh, uh, that I would like to mention here: we have the display display name and the alert info. Sometimes you have one agent that is a member of multiple call queues, so when they receive the call. Uh, they don't know which call queue this call is coming through. You can help them uh, uh, determine the source of the call just by using either 
or both of these options. Let's first talk about the replace uh, uh, display name. So when you enable this option, the UCM will include the name, let me go back here, the name of the call queue as a caller ID. So when the, the agent's phone ring, the agent will be able to see the name of the call queue through which this call is coming through. I have an example here to, to show you exactly how it's going to look on the LCD screen of the phone. So this is how it's going to look like when the agent's phone ring. At the top, it's going to show the call queue name. Then it's going to show the source caller ID or the caller ID of the, of the person that initiated the call. Then at the bottom, it's going to simply show the extension of the uh, agent. The other option that you can use, which is alert info. Alert info will make the phone ring different. So if I set, for example, alert info to bell core two or three or ring one or two, the phone is gonna ring different every time there is a call coming from this call queue. And when you have multiple call queues and the agent is member of these call queues, you want to set every call queue to use a different ring tones, either ring one, ring two, and then you can go to the phone. And if you want to customize it more, you can go to the phone and do that. So save and apply these changes. So now that we created our call queue, let's talk about how you can assign agents and how you can give the option to agents to log in dynamically and log out also dynamically. So earlier I showed you how you can add agents statically. So the agents who are going to be static members of the call queue. You simply choose the uh, extensions and you add them under the selected area. There's one more thing that I would like to mention about the static agents is that there is a limitation to how many members you can add to each call queue. And this depends on the model of the UCM you are using. In my case, I'm using 6510. So by model, the UCM 6202, you can have up to 23 static agents. UCM 6204, you can have up to 34 static agents. UCM 6208, you can have up to 75 static agents. And for the UCM 6510, you can have up to six, uh, 150 static agents. So these static agents, once you assign them to the call queue, they will become static members. There is also the option where you can allow agents or uh, users with extensions to log into the call queue so they can become dynamic agents. So let's save and apply this option. If you go to global call queue settings, this is where you configure the suffix for the agent's dynamic login. By default, the UCM is using star and the suffix double star plus the call queue extension. For example, the call queue extension that we just created, which is 6510, if an agent wants to log in to the, uh, to the, uh, to the call queue with that extension number, they simply need to dial 65 plus star to log in or 65 star star to log out. You can always change those. You can, for example, use 99 and then 999. So if someone wants to log into the UCM, they can simply dial 65999 to log in and 65999 three times to log out. So you have the option to customize these suffixes on the, on the, on the UCM. Next, I wanna go back to, uh, to a nice feature that gives you more flexibility and it's, uh, it's easy to use for the agents. And this option is called Easy Agent Login. So when you enable this option on the UCM, save and apply. So first of all, if you wanna use this option with the GrandStream IP phones, and it works only with GrandStream IP phones. You go to the phone, you go to account, 
and under SIP settings advanced features click on this one then we go to special features click on UCM call center save and apply so when you enable easy login on the UCM and you go to the phone and you make that change this is what's going to happen on the LCD screen of the phone the UCM will display an additional soft key on the uh, LCD screen of the of the of the IP phone that the agents just by pressing the soft key it's going to show them the call queue e extensions that this extension or this agent is a member of for example in our case here this extension is a member of two uh, call queues 6500 and 6501 then from here they can choose which uh, call queue extension they would like to log in so once they choose the uh, call queue extension they can use these line keys to switch between logout and login and also gives them a status of their uh, their login to the call queue that that makes it way easy for them so they don't have to remember the uh, the call queue extension they don't have to remember the suffix member but the extensions that will have this option of easy login they need to be static agents you can't use this with dynamic agents so now let's explain and talk about the uh, uh, dynamic agents and how they can log into the UCM it's very simple they just go to the to the IP phone they need to know the extension number of the call queue they would like to log in or log out just dial the extension number followed by the suffix if it's a star or double star to log out and one more thing about the this option is when you enable easy login agent dynamic login will not work so you can use either one uh, uh, of these and you can't use both of them at the same time so now that we explained how you can assign agents to the call queue and how they can log in dynamically uh, using the feature code or the built-in easy login uh, feature available on the IP phones especially the Grand Stream IP phones um, I want to mention one more thing which is the queue recording you as an administrator or call queue supervisor you can come to the queue recordings and this is where you download all the recordings related to all the calls that took place in the in the queue you can simply click on this icon to download one file or you can select all of them and then click on download all or you can download specific ones just by selecting them and then you go ahead and click on download you can clear all the old downloads you can delete them so you have some options that you can play with uh, right here so besides the call recording the UCM supports some of the uh, interesting monitoring and reporting features of the call queue that 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 are usually used within call center systems by supervisor or coaching personnel to guide and assist agents during cr critical situations so when it comes to the monitoring tools available on the UCM there is the switchboard utility that allows the call queue supervisor or chairman to monitor active calls on the call queue and operate and control them using the buttons uh, available and their options you can monitor the calls that are waiting for example if you can see here there is this call coming from uh, 1827 it's been waiting for five minutes and 18 seconds and next to it there's the proceeding calls with information regarding the source caller ID the agent handling the call and the talk time which is five minutes and 35 uh, seconds the call queue super admin have some options that he or she can do from the web interface of the UCM one of them is the option to barge into the call so that the supervisor can listen to the call while it's active there is also the option to uh, call insert call insert basically is like you barge into the call so you become another party involved in the call so you can talk and listen 
to both parties in the active call. There is also the option where you can transfer the call. If you see that an agent is not handling the call properly, you can transfer that call from the web interface of the UCM or the switchboard to another agent. You can hang up the call. So you have a lot of options that you can, you can actually do from here. And under the agents, you can see their status. Like this one is in use. Uh, this extension or this agent is ringing. Uh, that means this agent right here is not answering the phone. So when you notice that the agent is not available on his phone or her phone is ringing, you can simply go under options and you can log out that user so that it becomes unavailable so that his or her phone will stop ringing. So from here you have access to all the call queues. For example, we created two already. So we can only monitor these uh, two. Let me go back here. So besides the switchboard, uh, the UCM provides the call queue statistics for measuring call queue efficiency and also evaluating agents performance. And the call queue statistics provided by the UCM have some useful filtering options. Some of the options that are available from the statistics page is a general overview about the call queue. So here we have five calls with abandoned rate of 20%, the average time, the talk time, and how many callbacks were made from that call queue. It also gives you information about the queue statistics or the agent's statistics statistic in case you want to know which agent answered more calls and which agent uh, abandoned uh, the calls. So you can do that by the call queue or you can go to the agent details so you can have precise information about the wait time, talk time, and all that related information. Some other options that you can uh, also or that you have access to from the statistics page is the login record. And as I mentioned earlier that the UCM supports dynamic login and supports e uh, agent easy login or easy uh, agent login. So the when they log in and log out, the system will log that information here. So you can see exactly what time they logged into the call queue and what time they left the call queue. There's also the pause, which is a feature code that they use to take a break. And that feature code is available under feature codes. I will come back to the call queue again. So if you go to feature codes, these are the default feature codes used by the UCM. Star 83 to pause and star 84 to end pause. So this feature code is used by the static agents of the UCM or the dynamic as well when they want to uh, pause from the call queue so they can go for, the, for their lunch break or just take a simple break during the day. And for the call queue statistics, uh, the UCM also provides you with the option so you can download that information in the CSV file or you can configure an email so that the UCM can send you uh, a copy of those statistics to your email in a CSV format as well. And here you can choose the type of reports that you would like to include in the CSV format. And you can also specify uh, the, the time of day where you want to receive that copy of the CSV report. Another thing that you should know about is assigning supervisors to monitor and control the, uh, the, the, the call queue. Earlier, we skipped this one, which is the queue chairman. As you can see right here, I have two queue chairman. You can have as many as you want. So let's say, for example, we're going to use extension 1002 as the chairman of this queue. In other words, the extension 1002, when, it, when he or she logs in using the extension 1002 as the username, they will have access to their personal file as well as full access to their call queue uh, extension. So I'm going to try to log in using extension 1002. The first thing that you need to do is go to the extension and make sure that the password, the user password is configured properly or at least you know what the password is. 
so I'm gonna put admin one so I'm uh, this is under user password save and apply then the user with extension 1002 can log into the portal of the UCM to uh, supervise and monitor the CoQ in which he is the chairman so I'm gonna log out as the admin and then I'm gonna log in as the user 1002 use the password that we just created which is admin1 save and apply if you go to value added feature you see the call queue and you will notice that the this user 1002 is have access to uh to uh to the call queue as a chairman so that extension or the user with that extension can basically do the same stuff as the ucm uh, admin which is barge into the call hang up the call transfer the call insert the call uh it can all it also provides the agent with the privilege to log in agent and log them out so let's try to log in that one so this is just an example to show you so now I'm gonna log out and log back in as the admin so we have the cock use set up we have the monitoring tools and the reporting tools uh, we have assigned a cock chairman to monitor the cock uh, one step that we did not do is assign the call queue to the inbound route. So you can do, do it through the IVR, you can do it as a failover to a ring group or other options, but in our case, we're just going to use it as the default destination for an incoming call. So this is the inbound route of your SIP trunk or analog trunk. Just go ahead, choose queue, and then we can select the ticket in call queue that we uh, created save and apply and when you when you do that just make an incoming call to test all the features and your inbound call center is ready to use we hope that you found that video tutorial helpful and if you did don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for the latest in video tutorials i'm nathan sharp you have a good one